All right, everybody. There are seats available. Get them now. I think we're uh, I think we're good to go. All right. So, um, well, welcome. Gather around. Gather around. So this is uh, this is this is a neat opportunity. It's a little cold today, but we're uh, we've got some interesting stuff to talk about um, and to talk about right here uh, in downtown New Bedford, which is which is we consider to be the urban core of the entire region, this entire part of the state. And uh, we talk a lot about downtowns, and, this, and for good reason. That downtowns uh, matter uh, a lot. And downtowns aren't just any neighborhood. They belong to everybody. Everybody has a piece of the downtown. Everybody, the downtown is a place of common experience and a place where people connect. And that's the way it is in here. It's the way it is in every city around the country and around the world. And since cities came into being a long, long time ago. And the, from an economic development and from a cultural perspective and an urban planning perspective, downtowns have to thrive if the entire metropolitan area is to thrive. There is no successful city in America or anywhere else that doesn't have a successful downtown. They, they, are, they are inextricably linked. And that's why we do spend a lot of energy on our downtown to, to, to make it thrive even more than, uh, than it is. And downtowns evolve over time. Uh, this, uh, this building right here, Kruger Brothers, uh, was a store opened by some World War I veterans uh, when, when they, re they got back from the Western Front. Uh, the Kruger Brothers, I, I know them very well because my, my grandmother was one of their younger sisters. And so this business has thrived here as, as an outfitter of fishing boats for almost 100 years. But times change, and downtowns change, and the expectations change. So it's just as much as this was, this is the oldest ship chandlery, probably in the northeast, right across the street. In the next few months, you'll see a brewery open up. Um, that Americans' taste change, New Bedford's taste change. But uh, when when it comes to bringing people together, downtowns don't change. And so we, our strategy has been to figure out. How do we get our downtown to thrive? And there are many things to talk about, but there are, there are two things in particular. One, one thing to talk about is um, uh, a commitment to creating great public spaces. Cities only work well if people feel like being in them. And the built environment and how it interacts with people and the, and the environmental cues the built environment gives off to people matters a lot. You think about the, the best urban spaces that that uh, you that, that you have your favorites wh wherever they are whether it's you know Newbury Street in Boston or Michigan Avenue in Chicago you you everybody has their list but these are places that make you feel good <laughs> right well it's here for sure so so when you th so it is really important that we spend time and energy. Uh, thinking hard about how people feel in a place. And so it is with, with Union Street. A couple of years ago, we put in uh, the, the pavement that you see right here and expanded the sidewalks. And we've also done a number of other things, Wings Court, uh, Custom House Square, which is a great example of how uh, a great, a well-designed urban space can, uh, can contribute to uh, the quality of life in a, in a city. Well, two weeks after we cut the ribbon, people started taking wedding photos there, which says a lot about how how people feel about the place. So, you know, we're doing it here on Union Street. Uh, there is, um, there has been a, a fair amount of investment, public investment here that has begotten private investment right now within a three block radius of where we are. There are some seven restaurants in the pipeline. Uh, well, actually six now, because one just opened up uh, just around the, the corner a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and, and there are more to come. Uh, but we do know that in addition to being to committing ourselves to, to making the place look great and taking full responsibility for the physical appearance and condition of the city, it's also important to invest and invest from every source that we can get our hands on. And that's where the MassWorks program comes in. And um, uh, I'm pleased today to uh, introduce a great friend of the city, um, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. Uh, and she has, uh, and I'll just say a couple of words about uh, about the lieutenant governor in a second, but I, I do want to say that it's been terrific working with the Baker administration. It's been particularly uh, great working with, with Lieutenant Governor Polito, who has spearheaded a number of important projects 
uh, in, in New Bedford. Uh, and she is, we've talked at long length about the state pier and how it interacts particularly with this street. We've talked about uh, refrigeration on the state pier and that was a, an investment that she championed. I can't tell if there's a ship in today. It left this morning. It left okay. this morning. Another uh, one on the way, right? Yes, more on the way. But that those ships mean jobs and the refrigeration project that the lieutenant governor uh, champion that really took hold of in the last uh, capital budget discussion is going to lead to more jobs on the waterfront, and that's a great thing. Uh, but she, she, uh, she totally gets the approach. She gets the approach that good urban, good public investment, well-designed public investment, well-funded public investment in the right places leads to private investment. It leads to jobs. It leads to a higher quality of life, and that's what we're working on here. So I, I just, uh, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to turn it over to her, and then I have, I have some thanks to offer after she gets up uh, up here. But I want to take this time to, to let everybody here know in Greater New Bedford that we've got a lieutenant governor who really uh, understands what we're trying to do and has uh, and has thoroughly supported it. So, without any further ado, let me introduce to you Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. So, uh, good morning. It is a uh Truly a pleasure to be here in, in New Bedford. Uh, many of you may know that I live in central Massachusetts, right outside of the Worcester area. Uh, I served in the House of Representatives, I served at the local level, and I bring a very strong voice to our administration and to our work for the communities outside of the Boston area. And I see a place like New Bedford as having incredible potential because of your natural assets. And in particular today, we celebrate the leadership asset that we have here in this city. So I am no stranger to the city because I believe in collaboration and partnership and really understanding what this community wants itself to be. And right here, uh, working with our mayor, uh, who's done a terrific job in this, this visioning for the city, and the state delegation, from Representative Coxera to Cabral to Senator Montigny, you have a great team. Uh, what's not here today, but I know is evident, is the business community that is investing uh, private dollars into uh, New Bedford to see this vision become a reality. But it does start with leadership and a vision and a plan. And here in this neighborhood, we stand in what's known to our administration as a transformative development district. We have Jim McKay here, who is our TDI fellow, uh, who is studying with the mayor's office how to transform this very district into that vision that you have for this neighborhood. And I could see it today actually coming to reality. It was a couple of seasons to, ago that the mayor and I took a walk through the, this, this district. We met with many in your arts and cultural uh, uh, community. Uh, we had an award that day uh, to help increase the amount of arts that are here and, and really build on the t tourism industry that is evident here. And then the, uh, the announcements that the mayor is making relative to restaurants in a hotel uh, will bring people to a beautiful area of your city and connect to the natural asset of a waterfront uh, that you uh, are blessed to have. So it is my pleasure to announce uh, through our MassWorks program a $2.5 million infrastructure grant to the city of New Bedford for streetscapes, for ADA compliance, for traffic signals, for the things that will really help uh, create the development and transformation that you envision for this neighborhood. So a little about the MassWorks program. First of all, I want to thank the state delegation here for the passage of a $1 billion economic development bill uh, this past summer. And in that economic development bill, uh, we have a number of tools that municipalities can use for economic development, whether it's investing in uh, brownfield redevelopment or workforce housing or uh, investments like this through the MassWorks program, uh, you have a lot of tools to work with to see this happen. The MassWorks program is a $500 million infrastructure program. I want to thank the MassWorks team here. We've got Jackie and Juan Vega and Erica who are here who have uh, the, the tremendous task of reading all of the applications for MassWorks and helping us make good decisions about where to invest these dollars. You should know here in New Bedford, this is a highly competitive grant program. 
This team reviewed 114 requests, totaling $287 million of requests for MassWorks dollars. In this 2016 award cycle, we have granted 34 uh, applications, about $85 million. So this is a true credit to your leadership team in New Bedford for competing for these necessary dollars to transform this neighborhood. I also uh, do a fair amount of work as the chair of the Seaport Economic Council and as the chair of the Municipal Cabinet for our administration. So it does take me to this city a lot because you are doing amazing things at the municipal level. And our vision as an administration is to really build our, a stronger Massachusetts from the grassroots up. If we can empower and resource and help local government perform better, and be able to engage better about vision planning like this and actually see these things get done, then we are doing our job. And I look forward to continuing to see the progress on the state pier uh, as a major port. As a major port here on the eastern seaboard, you have tremendous assets here, not only for tourism and quality of life for the people who live here, but an amazing industrial port too that offers an awful lot in terms of jobs and an, a, an enhanced economy here in the South Coast region. So I wanna thank you. It's a real honor to be here and I know and the governor knows that investing these dollars here in New Bedford, you will take every penny and every dollar and stretch it and make it work for this community. Congratulations on your MassWorks grant and I am very happy to present it to you today. All right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go running right to the bank right now. <laughs> All right. So, uh, as I said, I think that there are a number of people to thank, and and you know, if you haven't seen it, I particularly direct the members of the media to take a look at this. This is the uh, this is the application. And I think we passed a few of them out, but as the Lieutenant Governor said, this is a very competitive process, uh, and we haven't gotten it every year. Uh, we got it. We try every year, but we this year we we think we had a very strong application and uh and it's reflected right here even a casual per perusal of the document will you know i think demonstrate that uh you know new bedford has its act together uh this was a very well thought out plan uh there was tremendous attention to detail and an awful lot of time that was put into it and there are lots of people to thank i just wanted uh, to note some of them right off um uh, off the bat, uh, Zebaruda, who's our commissioner of uh, public infrastructure and his team, uh, along with CDM Smith, the engineering firm that, that assists them, did a fantastic job. Derek Santos, our e economic development director, had a huge hand in it as well as he always does. Uh, our planning department, Pat Sullivan, isn't here. Lori Mooring is standing in for him, but great job for uh, in, in, in putting all the pieces together. Dagny Ashley, our tourism director. Christina Connolly from my office, great job all around in, in pulling these pieces together. It really, it really, this application really speaks for itself. And I, I just, uh, I can't thank our team enough. The city is putting in, will, intends to put in $1.3 million for some of the underground work. A lot of uh, the business of the city is not visible. The, uh, the sewer and water and other utility lines that are underneath here are really old. Union Street is really old. What's underneath the surface is really old. That's going to get fixed as it must. Um, the water lines and sewer lines, some of them are over 100 years old, and so we've got to deal with them, and we're going to be working on uh, that as well as part of, uh, as part of this overall process. Uh, we, uh, I, I want to thank, and I'm going to introduce Senator Montigny and, and Representative Cabral in a moment. I want to thank uh, everybody who weighed in with supporting letters uh, that are in there, including Senator Montigny. Uh, Representative Cabral, a number of folks weighed in, uh, Terry Bernert from Whale, uh, among, among many others uh, who, who, uh, who weighed in and, and pointed out just what an important project this will be to downtown New Bedford. And, uh, and overall, you know, this is something that really, we're really excited about. There's a tremendous growth in the downtown and there's, there's a lot of growth, there's, there's a lot of investment that is happening and there's a lot that is about to jump in. And we want to, we're trying to, our goal really is to keep the pedal to the metal. That's, uh, that's what we're up to. Now I want to introduce a, a great supporter of, uh, of our efforts here in the downtown and someone who's been, you know, a champion throughout his, his legislative career to, uh, to building, uh, raising the stature of the downtown and inciting growth, and that's Senator Mark Montigny. Thank you, John. And, and I, I particularly want to thank 
uh, Karen, for joining us once again. Thank you very much. So, some of you have uh, heard me speak about downtown. Um, there's never been a time when I get behind the podium to speak about downtown that I do it briefly, but I promise you, it's a little chilly for some, I promise you to do my best. But let me say that I think when we announce grant programs like this, it's important that we speak about the vision um, and the hard work. And there's a, a story that many of you may not know, and frankly, I'm surprised that uh, Charlie Baker, when he was running for governor here, didn't say it more because he actually participated in the initial vision that has made this downtown great. He was uh, secretary of a &F, and it was a relatively lonely time. Some of you, very few of you are here. Maybe that's an excuse for term limits in the legislature, but uh, those of you that were here back then remember what downtown looked like. Um, many of the storefronts were empty. The, the second and third floor and upper floor development was non-existent. There were a couple of bars and restaurants. Uh, you could see the, the assets, there's no question. The advantage that we have over perhaps every gateway city in the Commonwealth is that we've got these beautiful historic assets. We've got an incredible waterfront and we had artists and musicians that never left. They didn't quite have a place to gather that was appropriate, um, but they never left. So, ironically, when I think of those days, Tony Souza, your, one of your uh, thrice-removed predecessors, Terry, came into a room and we talked for hours about vision. And it was a time when it was difficult to convince people um, that the downtown um, deserved vision. That's pretty sad, because when you look at even those days, you could see, if you had an eye um, to arts and culture, you could see the natural beauty. And we came up with a plan, and at the time, and I think even post-development of the UMass Doster development, I think there's this perception that we took this risk and if you build it, you hope they came. And that was not it at all. It was a vision that suggested if we built the UMass Doster project downtown, that would develop the base of literally thousands of students it has. They would then spend money in art supply shops and coffee shops and restaurants and bars. But at the time, the vision was much clearer than that. The vision was to look at the best examples across the nation where arts and culture uh, have in fact been the driver of the private sector economy. Um, the, the rest is history. I mean, obviously the last 10 years it's been mainly celebration, it's been mainly uh, private sector investment, but that was the vision from the beginning. Um, when folks sat in the room, um, although I, I suppose at the time it was for those of us elected that would be answerable to the taxpayer, uh, it was certainly days of fingers crossed wishful thinking, but I think the vision was very, very clear. If you seed all of the arts and cultural organizations, and by the way, in the legislature, we have done that with millions of dollars. It was a day when the Zyterian Theater walked into my office and said, give us a half a million dollars and we will turn this into a world-class theater. If you don't, it will close. That was my introduction to, to Catherine Knowles. Um, there was a day when folks uh, didn't live downtown by choice. Now they compete for luxury condominiums and apartments. There was a day when the streets were empty at five o'clock. Now you struggle at times to find parking spaces uh, during even the week in the evening because there's more live music here than there is in places like Newport, Rhode Island during the week. Uh, so the vision was very clear, but let me tell you quickly about Charlie Baker's role in it because I think it's relevant to a philosophy of economic development that is urgent for this city and gateway cities. We put a billion dollars into a biotech initiative that never should have passed the legislature. It was a transfer of taxpayer wealth onto the balance sheet of private business in an area that has zero unemployment. I voted against it so you can understand that at least I'm not hypocritical, hypocritical in my criticism. You had General Electric move from Connecticut to Boston, $120 million, never should have been spent of taxpayer money to put on the private balance sheet of General Electric. Programs like this it's just the opposite, and Charlie Baker and Karen Polito have the vision for that. Charlie Baker sat in the room. We had a plan on Star Store. There were three of us in the room. We had almost no fans. It was called a white elephant. It was called a boondoggle and everything else. Peter Cressy, even at the university at the time, said, don't give me that unless you give me a $10 million endowment to somehow keep it up. There were people that had the vision, and he was one that sat with us. When the bonding cap was reached, he sat with us and said, let's do a long-term lease. The Star Store was built, 
the arts and cultural organizations were seated, tax credits built, housing on the upper floors, Route 18 was earmarked. We didn't earmark Route 18 just because we wanted to put in cobblestones and nice lights. We earmarked Route 18 because we have a vision to tie this downtown into one of the most interesting waterfronts in the country. At the same time we earmarked the money for Route 18, we earmarked $25 million for the state pier. So I'll close since the history is exciting and Charlie Baker bought into that history where if you come into communities with high unemployment, and you provide state resources, because it has been primarily state money that's developed the downtown. The feds went away long ago. It's been almost exclusively money in a partnership with the legislature and this governor to turn around this, this amazing asset. And the next phase, I think in some ways, is more exciting. The downtown is what it is. Walk around. Yes, you can always do more, and this grant will. But look at it. It's been, it's been thriving for over 10 years. Route 18 is done. What does that mean? The next phase is the most exciting of all. We have a $25 million bond, not wishful thinking, not something that we're planning on, not something we're talking about. I wrote the legislation years ago. It's law. The governor believes in the plan and we'll move forward from there. Using state resources to induce private investment works far better in gateway cities like New Bedford than it does in cities like Boston. Far better. Not to mention that the unemployment rate is higher here in Boston somehow. Um, has lifted its own, uh, its own boats, but not so much statewide. So let me close by thanking the Lieutenant Governor, but also say that long ago, when there were a few in the room coming up with this vision, Charlie Baker was there and believed in it, and it's a story most people don't realize. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mark. And Yes, the check is still here. I've been keeping my eye on it uh, the entire time. Uh, there are a few other people to thank for their contributions. Rick Kidder, the executive director of the New Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce. Thanks, Rick, for, uh, for the, your support. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Ian Abreu, city uh, councilor at large. And I want to uh, acknowledge uh, Bob Unger, who's walking away, editor emeritus of the Standard Times, but who is now enjoying his true calling, which is a uh, brewer patriot of that soon to be open brewery right across the street. Patriot Brewer, sorry, sorry, sorry. Country before beer, yes. Uh, next up, I'd like to introduce Tony Cabral. Uh, we are in Tony's district. Tony has been a, a relentless champion of downtown development and waterfront development. And uh, this is a, and he's been a big supporter of the MassWorks program. And this is, uh, uh, this money, this MassWorks money, will be put to work in ways that I think Tony will uh, will, will really like. Tony. Well, good morning. It's getting cold, you know, and I was listening to Senator Montigny reminiscing. That's a sign of gray hair. Is he getting gray hairs? Already? I got some. That's the sign he's getting gray hairs. But anyway, this is. Uh, I'll begin by talking about today. He, sp he spoke about the past. I want to talk about today and the future, uh, about downtown, about Union Street. As you all know, Union Street is, is really the center uh, of downtown for almost, well, well over a century. Uh, if you look at pictures and paintings of, of uh, New Bedford, Union Street is usually sort of the center of, of those uh, photographs and, uh, and those paintings. That's how important Union Street has been to the development of the city and to the downtown in New Bedford. So Mass Works is a wonderful program, by the way. It's a, a program, as, as the Lieutenant Governor said, and we want to thank the Lieutenant Governor for being here, our former colleague in the legislature, uh, someone who has vision, who has drive, and certainly understands cities very well. Um, and we really appreciate her commitment and her focus on cities like New Bedford. But Mass Works program, as she said, uh, was, uh, was we passed the bill in July and the governor signed it in July that uh, put another $500 million into this program. It's probably one of the best, most innovative programs that the state has. It's the kind of program precisely to do what this grant will do, is to really uh, fix or create, or create a better infrastructure in a particular section of the city, in this case it's downtown and, and very appropriately downtown, uh, to then allow to be the catalyst, if you will, of, of private investment. Uh, and uh, it is a, the kind of program that does above ground and underground. And you can see examples, examples of this program throughout the city. The beginning of Ocushan Avenue, the North End, right? 
so-called international marketplace, the whole area around uh, market, uh, market basket. It was also grants, for, uh, mass work grants to that change and, and, and created the kind of infrastructure needed to, for that particular development and all the other developments in that area to, to occur. So this is going to cover about five blocks of Union Street. It will transform uh, the street uh, and make the street really more, more, uh, more available in the sense of uh, creating the kinds of, of things that are important for business to, to invest. Not only the brewery, but the restaurants that the mayor has mentioned, hopefully a boutique hotel up the street uh, and, and um, open the creative space uh, as well uh, up the street that is on its way. So I think this is, uh, this is really what we ought to be doing. I mean, we know we all, how important operating budgets are, but it is really the capital budget, the state capital budget, as, as the Senate has mentioned, that has been the catalyst to invest throughout the state to give the communities uh, the opportunity to change its infrastructure and update its infrastructure in order to allow private uh, sector to come in and invest. Uh, we ha On that particular economic development bill, as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, there are so many other uh, areas or line items, if you will, that are going to be very important for us in New Bedford, and we're going to double down on that, okay? We're going to double down on that, not only for New Bedford, but for the other gateway cities. Uh, programs like TDI. Uh, as you know, TDI, we, we put $45 million into that economic development bill, and New Bedford is, is on, on the list to receive and will receive. We'll make sure they're going to receive um, uh, money for the TDI program to the transformative program. Also, uh, Brown Fields. Uh, and another program that is sort of a new concept, and I know the Lieutenant Governor actually used the term, workforce housing. Right, workforce housing. Uh, it's a, a new program that was included in the economic development bill. First, in my committee, if I may say, it was we put it in, and then the Senate had the vision also to include it at some point in. And we thank the Senate for that because the Senate really fought, fought hard uh, for that program. We think that's that's the kind of program that is going to help us in New Bedford uh, and in other gateway cities. So that's. Right now it's considered, quote unquote, a pilot program. It's only $25 million. We're waiting for uh, Jay Ash and his team to put the, uh, the regulations together in order for the program to, to begin. But it, look out for that particular program. That's going to be really a catalyst as well for investments in places like New Bedford and others. So thank you very much. Congratulations to all of those who were involved and all the folks that the mayor thanked. It was a great application. And it is the kind of applications that we have to put together in order to really compete and, and, and get the money that we deserve here in New Bedford. And I think we're going to be, you're going to see much more grants, mass work grants coming our way. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tony. All right. If you want to do jumping jacks to stay warm, just do them behind the cameras so you're not caught on, on film. All right. So we're, um, it is colder than we expected today. Last up is Representative Bob Cazera, uh, another very great supporter of our downtown. His district is in the north end of the city, but uh, he recognizes that the downtown is an is a integral part of the region's overall economic vitality, and I just want to thank him for his support. Bob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good morning. I, uh, I want to dispel any rumors that I might be a poacher here today. Uh, while this is not my legislative district, I'll acknowledge that this is my city. So from that standpoint, uh, I feel justified in, in being here and just taking a few moments of your time to speak uh, on this award uh, relative to the MassWorks program. The, uh, we in the legislature worked very hard to try to uh, into law incentives and resources to create jobs and to improve the quality of life for our residents. And it's always a pleasure for us when we can bring that, those resources home. And this is one example of that. So I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Polito, who uh, we all had the pleasure of serving with when she was a member of the state legislature, for her visit here this morning and for the uh, nice award of some $2.5 million from the MassWorks 
uh, program. The MaskWorks program uh, is, is not an easy program. It's not an automatic, uh, we'll, we'll take it, give it to us. You have to uh, prove what you want to do and compete with other communities to receive it. So it makes it all that much uh, of a pleasure, more of a pleasure, to uh, stand here this morning and know that New Bedford is a beneficiary of that to its downtown area and to a, a portion of the downtown area that's known as a transformative district. Uh, I think that you've heard both Senator Montigny and Representative Cabral speak to the benefits that uh, this funding will do for this transformative district. I'm just here to um, say thank you to the uh, people that are responsible for this grant and to assure them that we will put it to good youth, use and to uh, in inform the people in the uh, New Bedford area that we work very hard to uh, not only improve our economy but also improve our quality of life. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Bob. So uh, w once again, I, I really want to say thanks to the whole MassWorks team. You guys did a great job. I know you have hard, a lot of hard work to, to do. This was not uh, an easy process. Uh, we really appreciate the thoroughness of, uh, of, of your work. And uh, I'm going to stop talking before another garbage truck comes by. But I just want to say uh, to Lieutenant Governor, we really appreciate uh, your support and your leadership. Um, and the, this, this kind of targeted funding here goes in, uh, with, with the strong team that we have here in New Bedford goes an awfully long way. Thanks, everybody. Great. Let's take a picture with the check. Picture with the check.